and happiness were first arrested um, on the morning of 2nd October 2021 in his house in Ajao Estate in Lagos by a team of policemen from FCID Abuja assisted by officers from Ajao Estate Police Station and accompanied by one Miss Lobet Efifi, who happens to be the youngest sibling of the deceased, who the police described as the complainant or the petitioner. Jude and Happiness were detained in Lagos and thereafter transferred to FCID Abuja on 4th October 2021 by the officers accompanied by the petitioner and they were detained there until they were released on bail on 5th October 2021 when the police ostensibly found no reasonable cause to continue to hold them. Thereafter, they were rearrested on 15th October after being ordered back to Abuja from Lagos by Commissioner of Police Homicide Session Cholom Gyan who also provided a one-way airpiece airline air ticket for the trip from Lagos to Abuja on the grounds that the Deputy Inspector General of Police, FCID Abuja, wanted to interview them. It is our view that the police investigating team, seeing no further reason to continue the investigation of the spurious and trumped-up allegations of murder against Jude and his sister-in-law, Happiness Efife, considered it necessary to invite the parties to the meeting to find a way out of the distraction occasioned by the false allegations that their investigations had obviously exposed and to resolve the issues without too much bitterness or leaving painful and enduring scars in both families. However, the petitioner insisted that she suspected foul play in her sister's death and demanded an autopsy. She accepted to bear the full financial responsibility for the autopsy. Jude did not object to the autopsy because he wanted his name undoubtedly cleared of the first allegation of murdering his wife. The police then informed the parties that a formal request for autopsy would be submitted to the relevant Lagos state authorities to facilitate the removal of the body from the general hospital in Solo Mortuary to the centralized autopsy center in Yaba, Lagos. Adding that as soon as a pathologist was appointed and the autopsy scheduled, the parties would be informed and that they were at liberty to appoint their own respective pathologists to observe and witness the process. The clear understanding of all the parties was that the autopsy would take place in Lagos where the diseased was treated and subsequently died. It was therefore shocking to learn from Jude that when he was arrest, rearrested on 15th of October 2021, he was requested by the police to sign a document purporting that he had authorized the police to transfer the body of his late wife from Lagos to Abuja for autopsy. He declined because that was not the understanding of all the parties initially, except that this was a new position of the petitioner which was objected to during the aforementioned meeting of 13th October 2021. When Jude refused to sign the authorizing document, the police told him categorically that whether he signed or not, that the body of the disease would be brought to Abuja for autopsy and that they had the right to do so. The next day, 16th September 2021, Jude was informed that the police officers had been dispatched to Lagos in company of the petitioner to retrieve the body. It is shocking that some key officers of FCID Abuja appear to be doing the bidding of the petitioner even when it is manifestly wrong. In the name of facilitating the autopsy, the FCID allowed the petitioner to travel with the police to Lagos to remove the body of her late sister, whom she had falsely accused her husband, Jude, and the petitioner's own sister, happiness of tampering in her death, who died in a hospital under the care of qualified doctors who are still alive and can be interviewed from pregnancy-related complications, fibroid, sepsemia, diabetic ketoacidosis, as shown in the attack death certificate and medical report, and to care for the two infant children who are aged six years 
and 15 months as of today, and to exercise his fundamental human rights to freedom. I'm seeing this case as a case of vendetta, avenging her anger on the dead and punishing the living for what I don't know about. Because, come to think about it, who is loving that the Inspector General of Police will be listening to? That DIG is afraid of her. That when we approach this case, this is there. We will sit in a meeting with all these top poli policemen, with all the petitions from the family, right from the village, and all of them signed and submitted to this top police hierarchy. They will not treat that case. Waiting for little uh, uh, baby of their family, that whatever she said, no matter the meeting we had with them, will come to nothing. What is going on? If you allow me to talk, I will keep asking question and question and question because this thing has, it has no basis. This death has a death certificate. It has the medical report of the, of, the, of the disease is there with the police. Police have gone to conduct autopsy. Up to today, they have not made us the family members of the disease to know what they did with the, the, the report. But I know with the way they are going with uh, uh, Love it. That if they have found anything incriminating, they have done, could have done something worse than this. All this influence that she has so much in politics, she has so much influence in politics because she is connected. She thinks that she's connected, she's above everybody. Speak to the IG anyhow, talk to anybody anyhow, even the CP. Connected to who I don't know. I don't know who she's connected. But anywhere you go, they will say your best. Anywhere she will your best. So what I'm trying to say that we want to see that this case is settled. Nigerian police, as a good leader, as a, a IG, she always boasts that that she, happiness will see the result, that the next word that happiness will come, when we see her time, she will start running.